in the intro, I think we were kind of putting it lightly with the president said about solar and wind. He called it the scam of the century uh, with the president taking such a strong take or a strong, strong position against renewable energy. Why would it be wise to invest in the sector? That's a great question. And uh, if you look at what the Trump administration has announced so far, he's talking about stopping funding, which is mostly federal funding directly for projects. Only less than 5% of projects are actually uh, subject to federal funding or federal approvals. Most of the projects are built on private lands. They do get the federal tax credits, and the Congress has already approved that. Last week, Friday, we saw good news that those, uh, for the industry that those tax credits uh, can be available through end of 2030. Mm -hmm. So I think from that point of view, the sector seems de risk. There's little risk, obviously, on tariffs, but we think... Uh, there's probably more catalyst here on higher demand. You know, it's funny. You say there's little risk on tariffs, right? Because we were, we were talking before the show, yep. just to let the audience in on this. You said this sector's faced tariffs since all the way back in 2012. Yep. So these tariffs aren't going to shake up investors. But don't tariffs impact some part of it? The fact that you're tariffing some of the components coming into the country, it's raising the cost of something that already, I would imagine, has relatively thin margins when it comes specifically to solar, which I know is really your wheelhouse. Uh, no, that's a great question. And like, the new tariffs on the wind are something uh, new. We'll see what the final outcome is. But on solar, solar models are already three times expensive in the U.S. than in the rest of the world. So all, a lot of tariffs over there. I think uh, the, the, we're seeing a lot of manufacturing move to the U.S. And that's why on the, we like stocks which have domestic manufacturing footprint, like First Solar. All right. So give us a couple companies in the solar space that have domestic manufacturing footprints, and they do the majority of it. And also... If you, if you produce here in the U.S., I think one of the big things we often talk about, it's more expensive to produce in the U.S. So you have an advantage when it comes to tariffs if you, if you produce in the U.S., but what about the Chinese competition? Because Chinese companies are often accused of dumping and selling at low, lower prices. So you, I would think you'd have higher manufacturing costs in, here, in the U.S., and you're facing foreign competitors that are dumping and, and, and actually pricing below you. No, uh, First, is obviously the largest yeah. manufacturer for solar modules in the U.S., uh, we have solar tracker manufacturers, solar inverter manufacturers. So a lot of the manufacturing land uh, uh, supply chain is moving to the U.S. Uh, because of the tariffs, the, uh, it makes it easier for domestic manufacturers to ramp up supply, right? So the tariff strategy is working when it comes to the solar industry, even though the president doesn't like solar. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We're still waiting for the final outcome here. I think uh, what's definitely helping is uh, having more consistent long-term policy. Mm -hmm. And that's something which you got in the Inflation Reduction Act. And hopefully with these tariffs, we might get it. Sorry. I cut you off. So give, give us your top picks under the current regime that we have right now with the White House opening up a, two, a Section 232 investigation into wind turbines and their components. I know solar is really your wheelhouse. And also the fact that more solar production is moving to the U.S. Give us a couple of your top picks. Yeah, sure. And, and that's Section 232 on polysilicon also coming, which could impact solar. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of tariffs here. But, yeah, uh, if you look at what the administration is doing, so first topics is first solar benefits from near-shoring, anti-China policies. Uh, we also like uh, Sunrun. It's a residential solar company, not subject to federal approvals. It's mostly local approvals. And they also do energy storage, which is not impacted by all of this. And we like Bloom Energy, which is not somewhat on the solar side, but more on the uh, fuel cell or power for data centers.